Hey. Hi. Welcome to Movie Humpers. I'm Bob Sham. And I'm Angela. And we are finally getting to, we went to the movies. Yeah, we did. We went to, we went to the movies. We, it took way too long for us. We, <laughs> it feels like we've been doing this forever. We've only really been doing this about three weeks. I know, but we've done a lot in three Doesn't weeks. it feel like we've yes. been doing this a lot? I mean, yes. it kind of takes time to do these things, at least in a way that isn't too awful. I'm not know? complaining. I feel like we had stopped watching movies very often, and our movie time has vastly increased, and that's one of my favorite things to do, so I'm happy. Well, we're probably going to, success or no, keep trucking on this one for a while. Put the grind on it. Get the word out. We're going to pop it off on our old Documenteers podcast feed. Yep. So if you feel like you want to, if you if you're watching this and you're like, I would prefer audio only. Yeah, <laughs> if you don't want to look at our faces. If you don't want to look at our faces, you don't want to look at my cool possum mask that I wore on the Mad God recording. Mm-hmm. But finally, we were in the theaters, and I kind of wanted to get one that would come out from last last weekend. Yeah. But you you'll hear this; these dogs are licking uh, licking my legs. You know how dogs are. Anyway, so we went to the theater, and the movie we picked had actually been out, come been out the previous weekend. Well, what we did was we went to the theater, and the goal was to see whatever was playing right then. Yes. So the next very next thing that was playing happened to be like within five minutes. We we went in blind. We didn't go. We no, we gonna, didn't even. We look. didn't pick this. We went to the theater. We didn't even look. That's why we did not pick. At a time that made sense. It was like 5.30. It was like 5.25 when we got to the movie theater. I expected, you know, a scenario like, okay, in 45 minutes, we'll watch that. I was glad that we didn't have to wait 45 minutes to watch anything. Uh, I was glad that at 5.30, we had a viewing of Scream 6. That's right. And I feel like it was probably down to... Because <laughs> we wanted to hit up one of the more recent ones. So. That is a recent one. But... um. But as we keep going, we'll probably do more like as they come out that weekend. Sure. So I feel like, honestly, it was down to this or Shazam. There was no Fury of the Gods. question in my mind. It could have been Shazam, but that movie looks fucking unwatchable. Nope. That movie looks... Hey, look, what is up with this? Sh- look. <laughs> I'm a, I grew up reading comics. At least half my adult life, I read. You know, I, sp- I know. I spent a lot of money on comic books. I've gotten rid of so many. When we moved into this house, we moved thousands of comic books into this. I house. grew up loving comic books of all we kinds. Don't have them anymore, superhero and otherwise. And we had to purge. So I know a lot about these characters that everyone is. I could uh, give talks on Shazam. Did you know he was originally called Captain Marvel? There's so many Marvels. Well, he was the original Captain Marvel that was published by Fawcett Comics. Mm. DC bought out Fawcett Comics. Marvel sued DC, even though this character predated the Marvel imprint. Mm -hmm. And they shouldn't have lost, but DC lost the court battle. And they could call him Captain Marvel within the comics, but not on the covers. That's insane. So over time, they're like, well, we can't. We'll just call him. His name can be Captain Marvel, but it's a secret. <laughs> so now, so now it's just that this character's name is Shazam. His name is the word that whenever he says it, he turns into something. We're not talking about Shazam. I'm just trying to make a point. But that here. means he can never tell someone his name. Right. Like if they're like, "What's your name?" He's like Shazam, and yeah, he and he'll turn into a boy or. It's a... really problematic. How is it problematic? Because of what I just said. I, just, I meant problematic in the true term of problematic, not problematic in, like, there's something creepy going on. I meant, like, it's problematic if your name is a word that causes magic. You can never say your own name without altering your body. Okay. But the word problematic seems to lend itself to something's being like inappropriate that is that is like in the zeitgeist now but the dictionary definition of problematic is anything that causes a problem language changes language is fluid things can have more than one definition yeah that's true but like i didn't say anything most people will be like wait shazam is like uh homophobic you know well that's not what i meant i was just using my vocabulary okay anyway 
Shazam, this character, he's imbued. This is my problem with the, those movies. He, he he's a character that uh, he says his magic word and he's imbued with the powers of the of gods. Right. So he turns from a boy and he turns into from a boy he turns into a god. Yeah. So he says the magic word. He gets all these superpowers and he looks like fucking Zachary Levy. My theory on that because I agree with you one hundred that doesn't make sense. I oh. always thought because I never read the comic books I've only seen the first movie. I thought it was just, that's what he's going to look like when he's grown. So it just like fast forwarded him to grown, but gave him the power of a god. But I just assumed that they all just look like themselves as adults. I can't remember if that they explained it like that in the that's, movie. That's how it seems when all the kids turned at the end. They all just look like older versions but the, of themselves. The, the kid is literally like 15, 16 years old. Like you can tell... The adult version of him. I mean, listen, this is and this he's is not going to look like movies, Zachary. Bob. That's what happened. But Zachary Levy is the ultimate man, and and I'm saying the movies are kind of like I don't know. I, I I guess it's a casting critique. Okay. Essentially, is what I'm saying. Sure. Like Zachary Levi, what is that guy? He did that show. No idea. That fucking show. I don't even know what he did before that. Look, I don't mean to come off like a hater we and didn't watch shazam we didn't watch it it looks like it looks shit we went to see scream six which is different like mediocre in its own different way it's 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 uh not great i do have, but it's I, like part of this like world that we've been watching since we were teenagers i've only recently I think it's fun. i've only recently actually checked out the scream movies you never even saw the original I saw parts. I never saw, sat through the whole thing. So when Whoa, we that was watched it, that like, was pretty, uh, what was it, months deal. ago when we sat and watched a bunch? That was and, a, like, the f- we watched it ahead of Scream 5 coming out. We watched 1 through 4. Uh, so whenever that movie came out, we watched them all right before that. I think the first one is good. I like the first the one. The first one is really great. Wes Craven. The first one is really great. It is Wes Craven. The first one holds up, like, so well. It's fun. Everything after that. That's what I mean. Like, it's still fun. It's not like everything. Like, it's good. Try to remind me at the end of this discussion, Mm -hmm. I have a pitch for how to make the Scream movies, the next Scream movie. Okay. And make it, like, interesting. Okay. Because when I told you this walking out of the theater, I feel like all the Scream movies are fine Mm -hmm. until the, the killer reveal... And the explanation happens. But that's part of it. That's yeah. That's part of the whole thing. The way that it's set up, the way that Scream... Okay, well, the thing that's a part of it... Yeah. ...sucks. Well, I don't agree with you. Because we're talking about, like, if you get into the weeds of it, it's like, oh, it was a teenage girl, is mad, she was probably in another movie, now she's a Do killer in this mean... movie, and this killer is badass. Do this you This killer mean... is fucking badass in every movie. Do you mean... The monologue where they set up the rules, or the monologue at the end of "Here's what I, why I did what I did." I mean, I understand who I am. I understand it's like the franchise thing, but it's the who I am, why I am thing. Fair. The rules are getting old Fair. too. But I mean, but I expect them at this point. It's kind of, but I also said to you, and I know it's not exactly the same thing, but very similarly in like the Benoit movies. Glass Onion and there's Knives two Out. There's two movies. There's going to be more, I think. I hope. But listen, they do the same thing. He gets to the end and he's like, here's how it was all done. And like, I don't know. There's just something about that. That is like, like a different genre entirely. But it's also a thing in horror movies. It is a different genre. I was just trying to point out a time when you like that. But in horror movies that do that i feel like a lot of them do because it's like you get all the way to the end and then you have to just tie it all up like you have to make it make sense somehow because it doesn't like it's not going to like you're never going to understand why those people are doing what they're doing unless they just like lay it all out to you because that's not the way the story but the, re- told. the reveal in scream six is that the killers are the secret relatives of the person who was killing people last and that has happened before that's what happened in the second movie that's why it's like referential to what happened in the first. Anyone who was ever adjacent to a previous occurrence could, be your murderer. could turn into the next murderer Absolutely. in the next one, which is going to be a part of my next pitch. But I'm saying that's not very good. It's not. And it, you're comparing it to like the Benoit. The I'm not comparing two it. Benoit I'm just Blanc movies. That like, if they explain. I know it's not the same. It doesn't, I, I apologize for making that comparison. You could have made up anything. 
here. Yeah. Yeah. You could have made up absolutely anything for the reveal of like most of these Scream movies. The only one that, the first one, it kind of makes sense. They're like these, the Skeet Ulrich and then uh, Matthew Lillard are the killers, right? In the very first one, right? Skeet Ulrich, yeah. I, was it Matthew Lillard in yeah, on it too? Yeah, it was so the there two was, of them together. So there was two. Yeah. Which was cool at the time. It was like, oh. And also they're jockey. They were obsessed with movies and they were kind of. And they're jockey lean teenage boys. So it makes sense that they'd probably go around and be able to fuck some people up. Yeah, with yeah. With some knives. And now we're getting into the weeds of like anyone who just puts on this ghost face mask can just run, go hard in a convenience store. Yeah. Like fucking everyone up. Yeah. And it's. Like, I, I don't mind. Up till that point, these movies are fine. The suspense is fun. Yeah. You just the don't like the monologue fun. part where they explain. And I also think this movie pushed out in, in the sense that it was like, oh, that person you thought was dead? That really looked like they were dead. Even though everyone else just dies from one single gut shot with a knife. But this person who got stabbed eight times, he's alive. They did kill a lot of people. Yeah, I was trying to do a, a count. A lot of people died. But like the last five, oh, they're okay. <laughs> or the last like three four. or four. It's four. The, what did they call themselves? The. He gave them a name. The core four. Core four. The core four. Chad. And not, none of them were the killer. Here's the thing. It would have been better if he had died, but he didn't. And I'm also okay with it because at the end of the day, like, it's not a super dramatic horror movie. It is, though it, is, it does have, like, it's good jump scares, like, the suspense is good. It also has, like, a little bit of, like, ridiculousness under it. And that's where the monologue comes in. Listen, I, I, I understand that it's not, like, some great film, but I have never not had fun watching a Scream movie. I'm not saying it, it completely lacked fun. Sure. But I can have fun and recognize when something is just like, like, yeah, but it, boring. Like, kinda, so you were bored watching that movie. Well, I was, my, my eyes are pretty much rolling like in the last, what, 15 minutes? Hmm. I won't say, boring maybe isn't the right word. Hmm. Like I said, I was fine with it up until we have to explain everything. And then it's like, you could have, you could be saying anything right now. And now you got secret relatives when you were a fucking victim in the last movie. And, uh, but anyway, if you saw Scream 5, this is a continuation of the characters from there. Yes, this is like the reboot with the sisters. Um, I don't know what the older sister's real name is, but Jenna Ortega is the younger. Melissa Barrero. Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega are the new Nev Campbell. Mostly, mostly Melissa is like kind of taking up that like main girl yeah, role yeah. the one that is like being chased and attacked and is also being vilified like she is that person she's now. also the daughter of skeet ulrich which was a big thing so it was this thing where she reveals that she kind of when she killed the last ghost face mm-hmm. that she liked it she, she's yeah. the son of the original ghost face so it's there's in her some, blood. or the daughter rather she's the daughter of 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 the original ghost face yeah she uh she skeet ulrich is it ulrich or ulrich I, I don't think know. It's all rich. Well, I'm sorry if I'm wrong. I mean, um, whatever. Uh, I'm thinking. I, of, okay, you know my biggest I, I'm problem. I'm thinking of like the drummer from Metallica, Lars Ulrich. So that's my biggest problem. Okay. With the two new movies, because again, I think they're fun. Mm -hmm. She sees Skeet Ulrich in like windows and stuff and talks to her. And it would be listen, let his voice be in her head. But don't take a beautiful man like Skeet Ulrich. I think he's beautiful. Okay. And then do that Make him de aging a reflecting... thing. Well, they do that de aging oh, they thing. Did? They yes, did? yes, yes, yes. It's so wait, obvious. They de aged him. They de aged him because they want him to look like he did when he died, which well, was like eighteen. It didn't look very good. If... That's what I'm saying. They fucked him up. That was not his actual face. He is a very attractive man. Yeah. He's still on television. Like, he is a very attractive man. So he, and they de-aged him, and it made him look weird. He did die in the first He died, one. yeah. he They both did. The All all of the Ghostface killers have died in their movie. Yeah, I mean, they could easily just be like, 
oh, he survived, just like, you know. Yeah, but they didn't. And it would be cool to have her have a direct thing with him or something. I don't, well, whatever. Oh, if he was somehow, like, calling her or something. Yeah, yeah. Just being in her head. That aspect that she is the daughter of the original ghost face. I like that. That is actually kind of cool. I think that's really cool. And so, because, you know, in the... In and the, nobody trusts her because of it. Yeah, this is the thing that's dumb, because it's kind of the same thing that, that they did in the first few. It's, it's not that it's dumb, it's just that people are dumb, right? And they kind of do feed into that. And it is real, like, this would happen. Like, people blame her because she's his daughter. They were going after her, but she did kill the person who was trying to kill her, and she stabbed him, like, 22 times and shot him in the head. Mm. But after watching five Scream movies, you gotta shoot him in the head. That's what you gotta do. They even say that in this one. Like, yeah, yeah. you have to. But she does enjoy killing. Yeah. And she enjoys killing in this movie, too. But she makes the conscious decision that she doesn't want to be a killer. She will kill. Yeah. But she's not going to then go random kill. She's going to kill to protect her family is where we're still at now. I don't know what your theory is for the next movie, but I know what mine is. We oh, can compare at the end. Well, yeah. But I have one as well, and I'd be very curious that if would be fun match we, up at all. That we say what we think a next good Scream movie yeah. would be. I will say, too, that I know you did not like that Chad got stabbed a bunch, a bunch of times and lived. The same thing happened to him in the last movie. He should have died in five and in six. I forgot six. about that. He was like, remember, they like they stabbed him from all sides and left him out in the yard to die. Like, no one even knew he was out there. He was he should have bled to death. But he didn't. Um, and so he survived now twice. And he's like, he and Jenna Ortega, like, kiss right at the end. So there is that part where it's Gross. like, the thing that would have been so good is if he had died, then there would have been like that sadness. But I don't know. I like him. Like, I like those twins because the deal is, is that they are the niece and nephew of Seth Green. Right, right. Because Seth Green was the one that was like, yo, 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 these are the rules. This is how you don't get murdered. And because they were like obsessed Wait, with him. Are you sh- Is it not? Is it? Is it? I think it's Jamie Kennedy. Is it Jamie Kennedy? I, I think it's Jamie Kennedy originally. Look, those redheaded boys from the 90s. I don't know. Yeah. Remember the Jamie Kennedy experience? I do remember experiment? the Jamie Kennedy. You're right. It was Jamie Kennedy. The original, yeah. He was the original nerd that explained the I'm sorry, Jamie Kennedy. Um, so he was the original Who's, one. Who are you sorry for? Seth Green or Jamie Kennedy for calling Jamie Kennedy Seth Green? Mm. Well, I'm sorry I misnamed Jamie Kennedy. Because it's Jamie Kennedy who played the role. And I love him in it. And I called in the wrong name, so I apologize to him. Seth Green tried to put out a pilot of uh, NFT characters he bought. You know, the the apes. You know what I'm talking about? The NFT apes? No. Honestly, you're way cooler for not knowing what the fuck <laughs> I'm talking about. But you know what the NFTs are. and People are buying these non-fungible images, and they're supposed to be the only ones that have, have them, and they're supposed to be, like, valuable, but they're not. They're, they keep crashing out. Huh. But Seth Green tried to put out a, a show based on NFTs that he bought of his ape, an image of an ape. And I'm like, oh, is this going to be like played up for like goofy laughs? And then I watched like some clip of it that Mm -hmm. came out and it was actually played up or like a trailer for it. And it's actually played very sincerely. And I was like, wait, you're sincerely trying to build a show around your fucking NFT apes. It was like the lamest shit I've ever seen. It really brought Seth Green down a couple of notches hmm. in my mind in terms of just, um, you know, wanting something creative out of it, out of him. So, I, you know, I would say I'm cutting Seth Green down to size, but he kind of cut himself down the size with this yeah, project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about it. But when, uh, remember it when, definitely was Jamie Kennedy, though. Remember when Jamie Kennedy uh, told folks that Creed was going to play at a concert, uh, at this outdoor concert, and then the and then they stepped up and it was Creed with a K, and he comes out and he's just trying to play him like... No. That's the part, only part I remember uh, of, of the Jamie Kennedy ex- experiment. Uh, oh, I forgot he was in... Uh, Romeo and Juliet. Oh, right. And Malibu's Most Wanted. I yeah, don't know if you Malibu's ever saw that. Most Wanted. I <laughs> bite my thumb at you, sir. If he wasn't murdered like five movies ago, we probably would have seen him. Well, what's cool, What the reason I like those characters so much is because I really did love his character. I always loved the like, step outside, I'm going to like explain. The part where he is like, 
truly giving a dissertation on what you should not do and the killer is like behind him i don't know it's just brilliant in that yeah. first movie i fucking love it but the thing about these twins is that they are his niece and nephew their mother is the girl from dollhouse dawn yeah. i can't think of her name right now i know it but i can't think of it she played his little sister mm. and so she's th their mom and they've got obsessed with him and the whole thing because in the world obviously they're scream movies and so they yeah they get all obsessed about him so then the the girl becomes the one who's like here's the rules and the thing that they always have like a thing that changes right so like at the beginning of the fifth one it was like okay now we're in a requel so we're restarting kind of the story but still can some continuing characters but new characters and so that kind of thing this one was now we're in a franchise so literally anything can happen so listen like gail should have died well, yeah. Gail should have died. You know, Dewey, the beloved Dewey. Dewey died last time. In the last movie, Dewey died. Well, and this one, Nev Campbell did not die, but she did not appear. And I, and from what I understand, she is now done. So this was, I guess, the goodbye to Nev Campbell. They talk about Sydney for like a second. She's, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, um, Gail, you know, it's that same Gail like. Gail Weathers. It's that s same thing where she's, she's on the scene. No one trusts her, even though she's. Had to go through this thing over and over and over again. Is she a producer on the Scream films? No, I didn't see her name on this okay, one. Okay, because if she if she was, that would even make more sense why she's like always there still. But uh, but she eats a blade. The ghost face mm -hmm. goes into she's her been house. Stabbed multiple times. <laughs> I think she's been shot. Ghostface kills her lover. Yes. And she gets one in the gut. Ghostface loves the gut. That and, was funny. And then like at the end of the movie, they're Not like, the oh, thing. At the end of the movie, they're like, oh, she's she's okay. She's going to be okay. Um, what was great was they killed her lover, who was like this like big muscly black man who was like just like y yeah. much younger than her. She's probably almost she's, 60s. She's I don't know. She's cradle robin. Yeah. And so anyway, after Ghostface killed her, he made the comment of um, something about like those muscles didn't do you any good. And she just goes... Sure didn't. Like she was <laughs> totally not in love with that man. He was just around because she thought, oh, if someone comes and tries to kill me, maybe he can protect me. We know who her true she love is. She loves Dewey forever and always. And he ain't around no more. Yeah. I mean, no one would have complained if at the end of five, they were like, oh, Dewey's okay. Uh, Hayden Pantier came back. She's right. from three? Scream three, I think? Three or four, right? I think it's three because isn't four the one? So one is the original, two is college. Ooh, I can't remember exactly what happened in three. And then four gets, is the LA one. Blurry. Four is the worst. Four is the one in LA. Yes. Yeah, so the, the filmmaker. The film nerd is the killer. The film killer. nerd is the killer. Yeah, like this kid can go around just fucking shit up. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Because the second one is Nancy Loomis, which is um, Billy's mom. Yeah. And, like, someone at the college that she, like, ropes in to, like, help her kill. Oh, that's Aunt Jackie. That's Aunt Jackie. Lori Metcalf. Lori Metcalf. Um, our dog is we, named Aunt Jackie. We love, we're, uh, we're Metcalf heads. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. We love some Lori Metcalf. She's pretty great. Uh, but yeah, so, I'm not sure where I was going with that, except to say that I think she was in three, but I can't remember the story of three See, we're all blurred up. Oh, we're, I think we're doing good going through this, because we're Me not too. going beat by beat. Yeah. But can I, I want to describe, because every scream has an opening, this person is fuck scene. Oh, yeah, okay. There's a girl at the bar, she's meeting for a blind date. Texting, texting. Texting, texting, texting. Through the apps. And then the person asks to call, and they call her, and... It, they're playing like, I don't know where you are. I don't know. I'm confused. I think I'm on the right street, but I don't see the building. And, and basically kind of goads this, pretends like something's happening to him. And she ends up running into a dark alley. And yeah, he gets her to come out of the bar to like tell him what color the front of the bar is so he can find her. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, somehow gets her to go down the alley. And kills her. And she's like a, uh, a so assistant pr professor, assistant at a film Associate school. Associate professor of film studies. So she gets killed. And then... As the ghost face is leaning over, I thought he's going to take his mask off. I loved this. And then he took the mask off. I love this. And it's this. some kid. We've never seen this. This is kind of pretty cool. Yeah. So the kid goes back to his dorm or whatever. Very yeah. nice dorm. Yeah. Because he's in film school and he just killed his professor. Yeah. So he goes back to his, his I assumed it was an apartment with his buddy who 
he was supposed to kill with. And they're and they're talking about yeah. So he thinks he's getting a call from his buddy doing a ghost face voice. And he's like, dude, we said we wouldn't do the voices on each other. Yeah. And then and then he kind of reveals like their intent to kill uh Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega left over from like the last movie. Yes, because they want to like complete because they're obsessed with the movies, they want to like complete the circle, complete the job. And there's the stab world, this the stab movies, which Those is the, the movies within the movies, movies about, which is yeah. kind of my which I I do enjoy that I kind really of aspect. I love that of. so much. Actually, that was a really good part of oh, the but last let me, one. Let me uh but so it turns so he thinks it's his buddy fucking with him. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he gets him to open the fridge, and he sees his buddy dismembered in the fridge. Yeah, and obviously he's on the and phone with Ghostface. Go- and then Ghostface comes up and waxes him. Yeah. Because basically, like, he was a copycat. Yeah. He and his friends were copycats. Yeah. And Ghostface was like, no. But we do find out Every later... Every Ghostface is a copycat, except the first one. Well, we find out later that it was planned. They didn't know that guy was going to kill somebody. But it was, like, planted to set them up to, like, take the fall for, like, this. There's this elaborate theater that has, like, every real scream, like, artifact which in is a, it. Which is apparently those kids put, set that up. Like, they had they, the resources. and the man. Okay, at the end, we find out that um, Ricky was the main girl's boyfriend in the last movie. He was the murderer. And so right. his father and sister and brother end up being the ghost face of this movie. That father. Dermot put, Mulroney. Dermot Mulroney. Couldn't believe it. Put the names of those boys on that theater. He bought that place and mm. built it for his kid. Okay. He was a cop. So basically like that was the part when you were rolling your eyes, this is what he was explaining. So he, he, he bought this theater and he talked to his cop friends all across the, the country and got all of these like actual artifacts like bloody real knives that were used to kill the actual masks of each person who was a ghost face the actual um like shirts that people wore like at one point Hayden Pantier like looks at the the shirt she was wearing with the rip still in it from yeah. where she got stabbed like it was really kind of cool that part was cool I thought it's like this whole museum of scream or yeah, stab yeah. All, and there's also stab stuff because again the stab movies all the books are in there all of Gale's very resourceful books. getting all this shit I mean, you put under the table money, you know, like, yeah. give me this. What do you want? You know, cop like salary is a little too high. So his kid was obsessed with it. And that's why he helped him create the whole thing. But then his kid went crazy, went and like got with this girl because of who she was and murdered her. Yeah. yeah. But because she in turn murdered him. Now his whole family needs to murder her. So that's the, the, the secret story that children. Secret children. Yeah, that did. you didn't know that this cop and he was fine. Well, they knew the girl was his, but they thought that she was dead because they staged her death really early. Yeah, on. the the girl. There's basically like, I mean, three ghost faces. Four if you count the dude from the very beginning who gets killed. Well, then um, five because his friend was supposed to be, but he didn't. Yeah, so that so the those three, two guys don't count. Dermot Mulroney, his two kids. The boy hangs with the crew, but he's he not like. like He's not in the core four. He's roommates with Chad, though. That's why he's around. And one and once things start popping off, they don't really trust him very much. Mm-mm. But it is but it is made to look like he's not doing anything when mm-hmm. it's revealed that it's multiple. And well, the girl is the roommate of Barrera, Melissa Barrera, and her sister, and her sister. The three of them live together, and so they very specifically place themselves. And so they're in the same clique at school, pretending like they don't know each other, and they are siblings. Yeah, and that's insane. But also, part of the reason they felt safe living with her was because her dad was a cop. Yeah. But obviously, her dad's a bad cop. Um, Hayden Pantier does come in at one point because she is in the FBI. And she's particularly obsessed with... I kind of thought that misdirect was funny. I liked it. I mean, I thought it was funny, too. Like, I thought it was clever. Wait, do you think he was lying when he said she was... Okay, so she was a fed. Yeah, so she was a fed and... Um, she, she's like 30 in this cause she's older than these kids, obviously. Cause she went through this years and years before. So she's like, she's a fed. She asked to be assigned to that case because she was from that town. She got attacked by, she's has a very specific Woodbury, interest. Woodbury, right? Woods, Woodsbury? Woodsbury. I think it's Woodsbury. Okay. Um, and so. 
well, this she takes, comes to this town. Well, this movie takes place in New York City. Yeah, because that's where they're at college. They left. And so there, she yeah. comes She comes in um, to New York to help them. And then there's this misdirect where she, they have a plan to catch the ghost face. And she is, seems to be heading up that plan. Well, then the policeman calls and is like, she's bad. Just found out that she got let go from the FBI like yeah, two yeah. months ago because she's losing her shit. None of that was true. He only said that to Melissa. What's her face? Yeah, and they what's had, her name in the movie? Uh, Kirby, the Fed. No, the main girl. I can't remember honestly. Anyway, the main girl. I keep girl. calling her a real name because I got to pull. I know. Up I said Melissa. Here. I think that's her real name. That's fine. Um. So <laughs> so yeah. So he calls Melissa and he says that, and so no, Melissa thinks that she's bad, so they're going to turn on each other. Wow, they've been completely locked inside of this uh murder. Yeah, they're cathedral. They're, yeah, they uh, in the end they go in and they're supposed to bait Ghostface, but they get trapped. They're also showing these home movies of of like scream stab stuff that his kid made, mm-hmm. like his son Ricky, who she murdered yeah. because he murdered everyone. Right, he was obsessed. He murdered everybody first, and it, his girlfriend. He had a girlfriend it's on the, the side of her. It's they were the murdering secret together. Secret family shit. It's the secret family. It's always shit. secret family. Because who, but okay, think about this. Who, though, is more likely to become totally obsessed and want to actually murder someone than the it, person closest to that person who feels like they need to get revenge because no one is doing anything about it? That's what it is. Yeah. They're also obsessed with the whole thing. But the reason I think that they but, keep going back to the families is because of that. Because it's like, why would a rando just want to like jump in and do that? I mean, those kids were obsessed with. Well, this. you have to be a stuff. you have to be a psycho lunatic, though. Well, yeah, but these like, people are all psycho lunatics. They're all related. Lots of people got some bad kids that do some bad shit. They don't go off and like, well, I'm gonna go do the things my kid did now. No, yeah, but if you think about it, this is only like, it's like a couple families and a couple randos, like maybe. The idea is that, like, daddy's crazy. That's why son is crazy. That's why other son and daughter are crazy. Like, they just feed each other. It's either relatives or nerds. And sometimes, in the case of Nancy Loomis, Aunt Jackie, and that boy that went to school with Nev Campbell, family and nerd. Yeah. So. Yeah. Never really just nerd, though. I don't think that... Since the first one. I don't think I honestly even expected... Because I know the patterns of these movies and what I Mm -hmm. get out of them. I honestly didn't expect the reveal to do much for me. Like, much of anything. It never does. It it really is the three... The first three-fourths of the movie that I'm always... I'm always fine with it. I feel like... They're just a lot of fan service. Like after the first one, then it's just franchise we're gonna hand bring jobbing. back. Yeah. You know, oh, oh, here's the press. Where's Gail? You know, like it's just it's it is a lot of obvious things. And then there are at least a couple good misdirects, a couple really good jump scares. You know, like like you said, the tension is good. I think it's enjoyable because it laughs at itself. But kill, I think the monologue is it laughing at itself. But kill Chad. Kill Chad's ass. He ain't that interesting. But who's Jenna kill, Ortega going to make out with? She's like, she's Jenna Ortega. She probably would prefer women anyway. There were some moments. I think she does, actually. Okay, cool. There were some moments where Jenna Ortega, and I was talking to my brother about this, her face, she looked like Nev Campbell. I think mm, Jenna Ortega I is a brilliant see what you're actress. I really love her, and mm. I truly think that she studied it you and think? did it on purpose. I really do. She did. wanted to embody the Nev Campbell role, the anger part of Nev Campbell. Well, a lot of people at the end seem to like one of the twins gets the gut, the one that explains the franchise rule. Gets, oh, she gets stabbed. She gets stabbed, but she lives. Yeah. Chad is literally like got two ghost faces flanking both sides. I know. And they're alternating like stabs. Like he gets stabbed they just no less than his, eight sides. They missed all of his major organs. <laughs> Somehow it was a miracle, Bobby. I think Chad specifically has the ability to shift all his organs around inside his body. I think he's got a mutant power. Maybe, maybe that's what happens in the next movie. Maybe he's fucking immortal. I think at this the core point, core four become the Fantastic Four. Yeah, <laughs> make make Chad the killer in the next movie. Maybe. Ooh, that wasn't what I was gonna say. But let's get into that. Let's get into what you. What do you? What would your idea be for the Scream Seven? I because you know we're getting a seven. I know. Like a, I know. So okay, 
it's hard because this would go against everything. But I actually think it would be really cool if Melissa did start murdering. Like, I don't know. Like, maybe it's this thing where it seems to be completely normal. The ghost face shit starts again. And maybe we even get, like, two-thirds through the movie before we know that it's it's her. You know, but, like... What if like, she doesn't even realize it's her? This is what I'm saying. What oh. if Skeet... Okay, okay. Skeet, Skeet Ulrich. Skeet, Skeet, Skeet. Skeet, Skeet takes mm. over her brain. Yeah. Obviously, he's in her head. Obsessed. Like, he's in her head. And so yes. I think... <clears throat> I mean, listen. Undiagnosed mental illness can be very dangerous. And so if that is what's happening, she could go into, like, a psychosis, and it could happen. I'm choking. I'm sorry. You're just so into this, uh, your your idea, <laughs> your pitch for the next screen. Um, truly. <laughs> Do your pitch. <coughs> sorry. Are you sure? You need a second? Okay, here's my pitch. I just feel like I'm choking. We go back to Woodbury. Woodsbury. Woodsbury. Um, and and essentially, I'll go ahead and reveal who the killer is. The whole fucking town. <laughs> okay, Bob. The whole town is no. like obsessed. It's like, this is our identity. Are all these ghost face murders? It always mm-hmm. follows us around. The whole town becomes film nerd kid. The whole town. You know there's more relatives. There's more Loomises. Can't do and it. shit. This is the last Halloween movie. That's the last Halloween movie that we watched. What do you mean? The newest Halloween movie. The 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 corruption of the fact that the murders happen starts they they feel like it starts turning everyone in the town evil. No, they don't become Michael Myers. I'm literally saying the whole town gets a ghost face mask. <laughs> and, well, I didn't think they become Michael and Myers. And they all I knew just like meant. and you got like a whole city of Woodsbury hunting down Melissa and Jenna. Okay. And Melissa in the kind of in the theme of where you're saying I just actually thought she like has to Sorry. embody the kill. She has to let the Skeet Ulrich inside her come out, and she comes out, and she becomes like, you know, not to make some Dexter comparison because that shows uh, sucks. Yeah. But <laughs> at least I think so. I never really got into it. But but she becomes it really falls off after this season with um John Lithgow. So she becomes. She has to embody the ghost face. This the become the the spirit of the OG to like battle this whole town who are all ghost faces. Okay. And also this world will not ban ghost face masks, no matter how many body counts are piling up. But go I ahead. actually think we have a ghost face mask in this house. I'm not kidding. Like, I think my parents had it as a costume. Oh yeah. But, I mean, you might be right. Yeah. Um, okay. New theory, actual theory. Okay. This is for real. Yeah. Wait, are you, are you, don't dismiss my I'm theory. Don't dimi- no, diminish my theory. I'm not dismissing my theory. your theory. I'm it's dismissing, not a theory, it's just Can a I talk? I'm dismissing my original <laughs> theory. Okay. And I'm saying what I said before, scrap it. I just thought of what it actually honestly could be. So I want to say it out loud. All right. Okay. They do talk at the end of six about how they both stopped talking to their mother. Right? There they both is. stopped talking to their there mother. There it is. Because what happened was their mom fucked Skeet Ulrich. He became a monster. She didn't tell anybody. She married another man. She had a baby, Jenna Ortega. She didn't want anybody to ever know. And so then when when Melissa found out and she went and told Jenna, the mom got mad at both of them. So what's going to be is the mom is going to kill the girls. I'll go ahead and roll my eyes. I'm just saying the mom's going to try to kill the girls. And maybe, you're right. It sounds like totally right. If they need two killers, because, you know, now we're in like multiple killers always. You know they're going to have a third sibling. She has a twin. Of course. It's a boy. (laughs) He's a twin. His name, Billy. Bill. Ooh. What if it's some fucked up thing where she meets her twin, but they're like, she's she's like into him. (laughs) And they're trying, she's trying (laughs) to, they're trying to date. (laughs) But then it's he revealed. would know, though. He knows. But he's the fucking psycho killer. He wouldn't care. This is true. You think he's going to stop there? So I think she has a twin, and the best thing would be if they made it played by that kid from uh, that played Skeet Ulrich's son in uh, Riverdale. Yeah, yeah. He should be the twin. <laughs> yeah. Of this girl, uh, Jughead. <laughs> Jughead. <laughs> also, uh, for my pitch for seven. Mm. The whole town, ghost heads, ghost faces. Yeah. 
Also bring back gratuitous sex scenes and horror like it's the 80s. And yeah, like, they didn't have, have any some of that. ghost faces where like they're they got the robes but it's cut off like right here and they're nude completely from like down. <laughs> God. Have a they few ghost faces like that. Talked a lot about the one girl being promiscuous and there were like sex noises. Yeah, were they punishing this character? It's like you should have known she's a slut. I mean, that would be the what probably the kind film of, nerd girl would say. She didn't actually that die, is though. kind she of was like the killer. Yeah, the definitely if you think of like rules, yeah. the person who's having all the sex would die. For specific, those are Friday the Thirteenth rules specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So I think our pitches are uh, your theory. I feel like is really good. Yeah. And our pitches, um, Hollywood. Our our call me. Did you finish your pitch for seven, or was that your theory? Your theory or your pitch? The, the the same thing? I think the same. That's for me. That's what I think is going to happen. And that's what I see happening. And, and so I guess like my theory is that it's going to be the mom. So, but my full pitch is if it's the mom, it's the mom. And Melissa has a twin that she never knew about that the mom gave up for adoption because she didn't want to have a son that would remind her of this killer man. And so he has like grown up in foster care. She did not reconnect with him until after she stopped talking to her daughters. She was like, I need to go find a new child. She goes and finds him. His name is Billy. He looks like Skeet Ulrich. He's got the hair. He's got that, like, I don't give a fuck attitude. And he, like you said, I think he does. I think he tries to date Melissa. He tries to date her to get in close, right? Or even Jenna, like, tries to get in with them, right? Like, he's flirting, whatever. Maybe he, like, mm. makes some, some conflict between Jenna and Chad, right? And so, but then it is found out because, obviously, the killings start again. And he's, like, protecting her because she's trying to trust someone, Right? Yeah. So she's trying to like let somebody in. Yeah. And so she's trusting him. And so he's like around and trying to protect her. Meanwhile, he and their mother are killing everybody. Mm. And this time, he kills Chad. Yeah. Because yeah. maybe he really does love Jenna Ortega get in some of, fucked up kind of half brother way. Here. Sorry, Chad. He's a cutie, but he needs to die. Yeah. Gail, too. Come on. Gail, look. I love you. You know what, though? You know, the only reason to keep Gail around? Dale suffers. Punching her in the face. De De that is a tradition I that do is, enjoy. I, we'll miss the Gail punch <laughs> the, if there's no more Gail. <laughs> the the Gail dynamic doesn't pop off without the Dewey element. I know. It really it's was just missing. Not, it just feels when more forced. When that forced. man was in her apartment, I was like, Gail, what the fuck? I don't want to see her with another guy, even if he was just for protection. Go mystical in seven, too. Like, with my pitch. Well, you Bring kinda... Dewey back from the grave. Also, if you think about it, maybe Dewey starts talking to Gale in reflective surfaces. <laughs> <laughs> like, Skeet Ulrich. He's like, listen, I know he's talking to her, so I'm talking yes. to you, and I'm going to help you, Gale. We're going to catch him. That's the... <laughs> Other story that happened. And, and Dewey's like, uh, I don't know. Uh, like, Dewey can't give a straight answer. Like, uh, maybe. Uh. <laughs> and there's this crazy thing at one point where, like, those two women are standing at opposite sides of the room. And they each have a reflective surface near them. And they're trying to talk to each other. But they keep saying weird things because they're also talking to the reflections. <laughs> that was maybe too much. But I, I think could do. I don't know. I think that would be fun. What did you th think about my whole town being ghost faces? All of I Woodsbury. Think, I think it's I think that's hilarious, cool. but I so you know I think what it'd I think? be terrifying. Here's what I think it could be. I think that that could work in a movie if the whole thing was like maybe the new stab is coming out, or it's like the anniversary, and they've decided to have Woodsbury Murder Day or some bullshit thing that people do now, where it's like so past you know they forget about the victims and they're like let's just throw a party and we're all gonna wear these masks and they're giving them away on the street for free okay maybe it's not and the, the murder happens maybe in it's not the whole town but we do need a mob of ghost faces so maybe not the whole town but anybody who owns a blu-ray copy of every stab movie becomes the next ghost face yeah so, I bet Don't in they just hand you that stack of I, movies when you move into Woodsbury, though? I think that's the case. That's why a lot of it would be like, yeah. It's all the people who've moved there after because they're obsessed and they have like secret meetings in another very similar theater with a bunch of memorabilia, I guess. Hmm. Well, we'll see uh, yeah. how, I wonder how Split will be on this because 
you seem to appreciate the tradition of this franchise. I do. A little more than I do. Whereas, you know, there, it's not that there are things I don't like about it, but I'm just like, yeah, it just seems silly to me. Yeah. Uh, But you're going to hump this one through five times. Yeah. I'm going to hump it one through five times. And then, uh, and then we'll, it'll get tiered and then we will rank it. So, uh, go ahead. You go first. You tell me, you tell me what, how much you are. So I just have so much fun watching screen movies, even when things that are ridiculous are happening. It doesn't take me out of it because I have fun. Uh, you're a little more snobby than me about your films, I think. And, you know, to be honest, I really, really dig this, like, reboot. Like, or not reboot or whatever it is. Um, This, like, new cast of kids. I don't know. I think it's really... It's better than, the like, the third or fourth ones. It's better than the third or fourth ones. I think they have a new life. I think these characters are fun. We didn't even talk about Cute Boy. He didn't really matter. Oh, the Although, the guy that she's fucking, Melissa's was, fucking? Yes, but there was one, like, amazingly scary scene where they had to crawl between two buildings on an el- on a, I almost said an elevator, a ladder. Yeah, a ladder. And a girl fell to her death because she already, her guts were hanging out already, so. Yeah. But it was the one time when you're looking across and you're seeing someone get murdered that they actually, like, got them across the room, you know, instead of them dying in the room because there's always that scene where it's like, someone screaming banging on the window i am kind of a sucker for that kind of shot where like Mm -hmm. you see something horrible happen and it's silent but you Mm -hmm. see it Mm -hmm. and it ended up that that girl wasn't even being killed you know no oh that girl. yeah yeah yes like he's like beating on the window i do i do think that's pretty cool like i like that little bit of a trope that happens Mm -hmm. in movies sometimes the silent horrifying thing where you're far away and like oh fuck yeah and i you know you 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 think about other horror movies that we've seen that are more modern and you know, some of it's so ridiculous that it's hard to sit through the silly parts about this to me were nostalgic. Mm -hmm. I kind of even truly when it's like time for the monologue, I'm like, here we go. Let's do it. I, because I love it. So I'm going to give it a four. Wow. Holy (laughs) fuck. (laughs) He gave this a four? Man, I am not... Look, I think I'm... (laughs) Hey, you know. I'm glad you got something out of it. And I think it's... We don't have to agree on everything. No, we don't. You have to be okay with that. (laughs) Why? What am I going to do? I mean, ultimately, you can rate anything. What what am I going to do? Huh? I guess I can. Um, you could you could institute some sort of veto situation right now, but you shouldn't. A point two five. No, it's not that bad. <laughs> um, yeah, you have to give it what you honestly think. You can't no, like, counterbalance me. I'm um. Look, if an, I think I'm like, uh, I did say I enjoyed pretty much the setup, and I kind of like the the opening part. Mm-hmm. There are I do get something out of these movies, mm-hmm. but there's just the thing that's like. That it's supposed to be, but there are tropes about them that I'm not in love with, you know? So. (laughs) Jeez. I want to be fair because I don't want to, like, do my score based on your way too high I should have made you go first. Well, I was was setting things up, so you had to, yes. Okay, I'm going to go 2.75. I think that's fair. So that makes it a total of six. Just a point. teeny weeny bit above straight down the middle. Yeah. I would that's maybe how I would um the fifth one I might hit that about the same. Maybe actually I don't know, I really hated the the, the killer explanation. I don't know. I guess I just don't like that part of these movies. No, I like, get the first one. It's so fine. I might put five the same, maybe one up. I don't know. It's hard because part of me giving it such a high score is the excitement I feel around it. Okay. 
You know, there's just certain movies that even if they're so bad, I'm going to love them. Like when Terrifier 3 comes out, we're going to go to the theater and I'm going to have a great time. And well, it's not going to be a great movie. Okay, well, whether I make it a 2.75 or a 3, it's a B-tier movie either way. So uh, 2.75 and you're 4, it's a 6.75. <laughs> Yeah, 6.75. It is a B-tier movie. Do I think this has actually... uh, It's actually the same score as Hotel Transylvania. I think that's fair. (laughs) I think that's totally fair. Scream 6. Because if I had to pick another one to... One of those two to watch over again, I would watch Scream 6 over again before I'd watch Hotel Transylvania again. Really? I would watch the sequel to Hotel Transylvania. I have been kind of telling you I wanted to see it, but I don't want to watch the original one again, no. Because the music is not good. As far as a B-tier 6.75 rated movie, Scream 6 is better than Hotel Transylvania. I do. I, I, might, I would personally pick Hotel Transylvania, but, but yeah, we can say that Scream 6 is the best B-tier. <laughs> Jesus, am I really saying this? Yep. I mean, we have it. We just need to watch more movies. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. And um, Ghostface, am I right? He understands our motto: "Death to all traitors! Don't kill my secret son, or I'll send my secret <laughs> daughter and other da- secret son. secret daughter and secret son after you." Because that's a that's a great plot point, isn't it? <laughs> that's a four out of five star. That's a four the out of five is, star plot point. At the end of the day, it doesn't to, matter. We have to go, Angela. Death to all traitors. Death to all traitors.